assuming you're working in a in an industry where um you know say there's a humanitarian crisis or refugees need to be you know taken to a safe place and time and urgency become a barrier to telling these stories in a way that's more respectful right um and you know because you want the call of actions quickly how then do you tell these stories in that context we've been um you know, really tightening up around uh, things like informed consent. I always say if you're having that conversation and it only takes a minute, you're not having an informed consent conversation, right? So, you know, that should be a process that that, that can take up to half an hour to really be fully um, informed. Now, in, an, in a humanitarian, fast evolving um, humanitarian situation, which I think you were just describing, it, you know, that's often a, a you know, un- it's not possible to do that. For COVID, for example, we also can't, we couldn't get, you know, forms signed because you had to keep six, <laughs> you know, distance away. And, you know, you have to sort of think in, sometimes in slightly different ways. And one of the questions I think um, that we ask is, you know, if this was an image or portrayal of your mother, your sister, your son or your brother, would you be comfortable with do- with do- doing, you know, sharing this with the world is it you know and i think it is about trying to to really think about that connection piece that human to human connection piece and you know we know that in humanitarian emergencies people are often quite keen that the world is seeing what is happening so i think that you know there has to be that level of understanding as well but it is about um thinking about different factors around dignity and empowerment for example and often people can be in very undignified situations such as a humanitarian emergency, but that doesn't mean to say you can't portray them in a way that is empowered. Absolutely. Thank you, Claire. Chilande, I saw you're taking notes. I'm assuming you're also, (laughs) you wanted to answer some of these questions. You know, I'm underscoring, I mean, in in my mind, I'm just underscoring what Claire is saying, because in in, in those types of uh, situations that we often find ourselves in, in that moment, it becomes about instinct, right? It, you, 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 you're, you're acting on instinct, and that is driven very much by the values that you already have. Um, and, and in that emergency situation, people are acting on common sense. And so a lot of times, when, you know, when, I, when I'm preparing with folks here, we are always saying, first and foremost, we know that, um, I don't know if we, we can continue to say that this is, kind of an emergency in that sense like it's unprecedented because a lot of these crises that happen are things that have been happening over time it's just that because we are always in a project mindset we always imagine right we've dealt with that hurricane right we've dealt with that you know um you know famine but we see these things are coming right we know that these things could come and organizations don't do enough of these scenarios planning forward thinking planning to prepare themselves um, in a way that allows them to actually act, avoid some of those mistakes. There are some photographs that have been going out. Kenya, as, as you know, right now we, we are having famine, right, in Northeast Africa, in Northeast. Um, and so when, when I see, I, somebody sent me some very questionable photographs the other day to donate food, and I was very upset. And I said to them, what are you doing? Oh, we just took the first photographs that we could take in that moment because we needed to do this appeal. And I said, no, 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 we've been doing this. There's a cycle, right? So do put in the work beforehand to make sure you have something that can anchor you as you collect fresh information. There's no point of going down an an ethical route just because this has happened. The incident has happened, but it's not necessarily unprecedented. It's not an emergency. Um, and it's because we don't think enough about our communications and prepare ourselves for it. Oftentimes you find yourself in situations where you have to act on impulse and you have to sort of make quick decisions about what to do, right? When you're putting out your messages, capturing stories real time, and you're trying to put out messages in real time and all of that, it's true. But here's one thing, when you act on impulse, what you're simply doing is you're going back and reflecting what values you have imbibed over time that's what impulsive and reflexive action does and so when you put in on the spot you put in those situations where you have to make very quick decisions you're simply going to go back and pull out from your reservoir of 
values that you have imbibed over time, narratives that you have been exposed to over time. It reflects in those quick decisions that you make. And so I think this brings me to the point of making respective storytelling um, a consciousness, not just a concept that needs to be that needs to be learned, right? It, it has to be imbibed. It has to be part of business as usual.